Stay tuned for the following special presentation from KOFO, 1220 and 103.7 FM. KOFO, your sports source for East Central Kansas, welcomes you to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show on 103.7 FM, 1220, and online at KOFO.com. We invite you to join us live at Pizza Time in downtown Ottawa for food and drink specials during the show as we talk OU Braves and Lady Braves basketball with head coaches Aaron Siebenthal and Bruce Tate. Pizza Time Hoop Talk is brought to you by Ottawa Family Physicians, Lamb Roberts Funeral Home, Pizza Time, and Ottawa University. Now, with this edition of Pizza Time Hoop Talk, here's KOFO's David Potter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk show. I'm your host, David Potter, and as always, I'm here at Pizza Time in downtown Ottawa, so come on down and join us to talk some OU basketball, eat some pizza, have some of their cheese sticks. Those are actually my favorite thing they've got here, but you can... uh, also submit your questions to us here to the coaches no one wants to hear my opinion but you can ask the coaches some questions or if you're listening at home you can call them in or send them in on uh, facebook or on twitter i'm joined first today by the coach of the braves men's team aaron siebenthal and coach thanks for being here tonight as always absolutely thanks for having me david yep so uh you guys have played uh, two games since our last show and, and the last one's going to be more Fun to talk about than the other, but uh, we'll get the the Kansas Wesleyan game out of the way, and the, we'll, we'll move on to yesterday's win. Um, so, as far as that Wesleyan game goes, you know, af- after after you lose a team, you don't ever see the players walk around smiling or anything. But it it seemed like there was a little extra frustration at the end of that one that the players really felt like they had one that that got away from them. Was that the the sense in the locker room? Yeah, definitely. We. Uh... You know, we went, went and beat them at their place, and that kind of got us on a, a little roll. And, and then this this time around, we, we came out flat with no energy, which is there's just no excuse for that in your own gym. Um, and, and we didn't guard very well. I mean, they're a team that was really small and really dribble drive, and we, we didn't guard the ball at all and uh, definitely let one get away, we feel like. And, and kudos to, to Kansas Wesleyan, and, 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 I mean, they beat us for sure, but uh, we don't feel like they got our, our best effort on uh, – last Saturday so and they were able to jump out to that 10 nothing lead and what's uh and it was so quick what what's your message to the team when you you, when they look up and they see that you know they they not only have to be better than the other team but 11 points better from that point on it almost feels like you're playing a full game starting out down 10 nothing um you know do you do you try and light a fire under them and get them get them going or tell them to relax and stick to the game plan or is it just dependent on the situation it, it usually depends but if we're down early like that more than likely we came out flat without any energy so um in, in that case i'm going to call timeout and put my my cheerleading outfit on and and <laughs> uh kind of remind them that this is our home court and we need to, to come out with more energy and and uh so uh it, it wasn't anything x's and o's wise it wasn't anything other than um what we believe in and we we talk about all the time is we have to play and compete with effort, energy, and enthusiasm every day, and, and we didn't do any of that for a long, a long stretch. And we just dug ourselves too big a hole, and we, we spent all of our energy trying to get out of that hole. And once we finally got out of it, we just kind of ran out of gas. So um, it definitely was a disappointment. Definitely let one got, get away. But uh, I'm proud of our guys for rebounding against uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan last night. Yeah, and uh, just just uh, the last thing I, I want to touch on on Kansas Wesleyan is, like you said, they they did dig their way out of the hole, and they you know you guys you know it, it looked. Like you'd, you'd get up by a possession, you'd get a stop, and it looked like okay, finally now they're they're gonna break it open, and it just seemed like uh, Wesley had an answer every time. Does it does that start to to grate on the players after a while when it seems like you know, man, these guys just won't go away? Yeah, I mean, but I think that's that's you know, you need to expect that from your opponent. You want that from your opponent. You want to get their best shot. Um, you don't want them to roll over. So I mean, it, it's. Uh, I mean, that's what competition is about. Is they're they're going to throw haymakers at you, and you got to answer. And and uh, um, the bottom line is, it doesn't matter who you're playing in our in our league. I mean, we beat Kansas Wesleyan, I think, 13 games in a row. First time they won in Wilson Fieldhouse for a long, long time. And and uh, you know, you talk about we were dejected after that game, but you could Kansas Wesleyan was really excited to get that monkey off their back. And and uh, so it goes both ways. Right. Um, but we just we got to come out with a better sense of purpose uh, to start games. Well, like you said, you did rebound last night against Oklahoma Wesleyan. Uh, held them to 5 of 32 shooting in the first half. 
Uh, was there something you saw in film, either from the, the first game or watching them otherwise, that uh, you felt like you could really limit their, their shots early and, and take them out of the rhythm? Uh, just our, our base defense. I mean, what we do defensively is, is uh, um, all we did. We didn't change up anything. It was just a matter of are we going to make that a priority or not? Are we going to make defense a priority and let offense be a, a byproduct or a result of our defense? And I, I think we were just better focused and more locked in. And, um, you know, they, they run a lot of high ball screen stuff. And, and the guy using the ball screen is the guy that's going to try and score. And if you'll focus on him and not really worry about the screener, then it's kind of a, almost a, a floating trap. And it was pretty effective. And, um, and we just want, they, they, number one, Braven Alexander gets 20 points a game. And, uh, he's a good player. We just want him to, if he's going to score, we want him to earn everything he gets and make right. it tough for him. And I thought we did a really good job on him and really everybody. I mean, you hold a team to 15 points in the first half. It's it's might be because they're not hitting shots, but I don't think they got a whole lot of good looks either. So, Right. And Alexander, two points on 11 shots at halftime. I believe he finished with just nine points. So he was, uh, it sounds like he was, uh, if not a focal point, at least someone you had a, a specific game plan for in terms of working off those high ball screens yeah definitely he was uh he was the focal point and then <coughs> excuse me uh, the other the other big thing we had to focus on was rebounding um oklahoma wesleyan's the number one rebounding team in, in the country um they have the second most offensive rebounds in the country and i think they have over a 10 point differential uh from to their opponents rebounds and we i think we lost a rebounding battle by two so, uh, you know, we're not a, a big team by any means and not super athletic all around. So for us to, to battle with them on the boards and, and play as good a defense as we did, um, that was definitely uh, the key to the game. And as far as rebounding goes, obviously there's technique to it, but so much of it is just earning it and, and wanting the rebound. So when you are preparing for a team that, uh, like you said, has that big rebounding differential over their opponents, it, is there anything technical that you work on in practice when you're preparing for them, or is it really just pounding that message home that, guys, you, you got to hit the boards tonight? Yeah, just pounding that message home and then having, uh, you know, we'll always have one team in practice that is kind of the scout team that, that takes on the persona and the characteristics of our opponent. And those guys, we just told them to shoot the ball and everyone else crash as hard as you can. And, and uh, so I think that was a, they got a good look from the scout team. And, and uh, just a matter of making it a priority. Um, and, and the biggest thing is when the shot goes up, there's no reason to look at the backboard or the rim. That's generally the area the, b the basket is going, and that's stationary. The, the moving target is your man, so turn away from the basket and find your man and get a body on him. And uh, for a great rebounding team like that, it, it's, it's got to be the guards that go get the long rebounds and the loose balls. Um, it can't just be our big men that rebound because we want them to try and negate their opponents um, and let our guards go get the rebounds. So. And then uh, last night, leading the team in scoring once again was Logan Bollinger with, I believe, 27. And he's coming off a week where he was named KCAC uh, Offensive uh, Player of the Week and averaging 28 points a game, had a couple 30-point performances in there. What, uh, what, is, he, uh, is he eating something different, or what, what's changed with, uh, with Bollinger these last couple weeks? Uh, I think he would probably tell you it's the awful, disgusting mustache he has on his upper lip. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know... I can't say enough good things about Logan. He uh, He's a good basketball player, but he's a great person. He's a 4.0 student, um, and, and he's really the, the epitome of what, what coming and, and working for four years will get you. you know, so many guys want that instant gratification of I come, I start, I play a lot, and, and uh, Logan's been a four-year varsity guy, but this is his first year as a starter, as a senior, and he's he's earned that right, and uh, he, he's just really good. I, you know, KCAC called him the offensive player of the week. I would call him the just the player of the week in the KCAC. I mean, Averaged over 28 points. He's leading the league in block shots. He, I think, averaged seven or eight rebounds on the week. Um, takes charges. I mean, he's just a, a really good all-around player. And, and uh, so, I mean, most of that is attributed to, to his hard work and the time he's put in the, the last four years here. Yeah, and I know uh, in, in the, the players that I've had a chance to talk to on, on the show here this year have had nothing but you know, the, the same kind of things to say about him. And something I've always noticed, anytime he gets a basket down low off an assist, the first thing he does is points out to the guy who passed it to yep. him. It just seems like a real team first kind of player. He, he absolutely is, and that's why I was excited to see him get some individual uh, recognition because he's always been about the team, and he always will be. So uh, I was happy for him. Um, but he, he told our guys when, when we brought it up in practice that he would have trade that in a heartbeat for, for the, you know, the win over K-Dub. So, I mean, he, he's just a, a great person, and he's going to do good things, and hopefully he'll make a lot of money and, and donate some back to the program someday. <laughs> uh, 
Um, then as far as a couple other players go, uh, Titus Rice, something I, I noticed, you know, I, I, well, I've noticed throughout the season, but really he showed it a lot late against uh, Kada when you guys were trying to come back is it seems like Titus Rice has, has such a quick first step that he can almost get into the lane at will. Um, but, but sometimes it seems like he's, he turns into more of a jump shooter. And at least from where I'm sitting, there's a reason I'm on press row and you're the one coaching the team. So I, I may be wrong, but it seems like at times if uh, you know, he just was a little more assertive and would just get into the lane a little more, that he could almost just score at will. Yeah, I think Titus, uh, Titus is just an a incredible athlete, and he's a, a good basketball player. Um, Titus, I think, sometimes thinks there's a degree of difficulty in, in, in basketball and thinks that um, taking tougher shots is going to get us more points. <laughs> um, Titus, can, Titus, if he dribbles once or twice, is really good. More than that, I mean, he, he's been our leading scorer. Logan surpassed him now, but you know, the more you dribble, the more everyone else is, is kind of coming to you on defense. So um, I love Titus to catch and shoot the three. I love him to take one or two dribbles and get to the rim. Uh, if, if he does those things, he's nearly impossible to guard. Right. Um, so, you know, I think he, he sometimes overthinks um, what the defense is doing or what they're giving him instead of just saying, you know what, I'm six foot four, I have really long arms, I'm really, really bouncy, and I'm going to go by you and score. Um, and he, he did that at the end of the K-Dub game, but I still think he made some of those shots a little too too difficult. But they went in, and he kept us in the game for a while. So, Yeah, because I would say – you know, if he doesn't have the quickest first step of anyone I've seen in the conference, he's he's right up there with anyone else. Yeah, for sure. And and he's he is he has an unbelievable just catch and shoot jump shot from three. I mean, it's it's beautiful. And I think he passes up too many of those shots. So he's a guy that routinely hears me tell him he's got to shoot the ball more. So um, hopefully he'll he'll buy into that and and take good shots and and keep being aggressive because we we need him to be aggressive because. As, as Logan continues to, to score and be our leading scorer, teams are going to shift their focus from Titus to Logan, and then you know Titus is going to have to step up and knock some, some shots down. So, All right, well, we will go ahead and take our first break and then be back with uh, another segment with Coach Steventhal. And, again, we're here at live at Pizza Time in downtown Ottawa, and you're listening to Hoop Talk on KOFO. Family Physicians, their physicians and nurse practitioner provide a variety of comprehensive health care services, including family medicine, OBGYN, pediatric and geriatric care. Doctors Ransom, Spratt, Gallier, Sinclair, Ojale, Nichols, and Simmons offer their services 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 8.30 to noon. For your health care needs, call Ottawa Family Physicians at 785-242-1620. Lamb Roberts Funeral Director, Eric Price. I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about cremation services for America today. A lot of people think that it's only a good alternative if money is an issue. Cremation, in the end, is a disposition. It's not a service. The funeral service that we're going to provide, whether you're uh, traditional services or cremation services, is going to be essentially the same. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home. Compassionate care when you need it most. Pizza Time in downtown Ottawa has been Ottawa's pizza joint since 1985. Enjoy their lunch buffet Monday through Friday from 11 to 2. Dine in or carry out your order. Call 242-TIME. That's 242-8463. It's always time for pizza at Pizza Time. And welcome back to Pizza Time here in downtown Ottawa, where this is once again the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show, and we've so got Coach Steventhal from the OU men's team here. We've kind of gone over the last week's events, the uh, coming off of last night's big win over Oklahoma Wesleyan, where they were able to get the uh, 24-point win. And now looking ahead, before your, uh, well, well, we'll get to UMKC here in a minute. Before that, you've got a uh, game on the road coming up against Bethel here on uh, Saturday, and you guys were able to to get the win over them. Uh, in, in Wilson Fieldhouse earlier this year or the, earlier this season, and they've uh, they've had kind of a rough go with it, losing I, I think six straight now. But they've also they're also a team that won that beat Kansas Wesleyan by forty. Um, you know they've had a and uh, I, I know they've had a couple of close games with some better teams this year. So it's not uh, it's not like they they're lacking in ability. Yeah, there's uh, I mean. It's, it sounds cliche to say, and this wasn't true three or four or five years ago, but there is no easy win in the KCAC anymore, um, especially going on the road. Um, Bethel has one of the best players. Uh, I think he's top five in scoring with Devin Goodwin. 
Um, he's getting over 20 a game and, and uh, got uh, some other weapons. Uh, Chris Robinson, I think, was a defensive player, been the defensive player of the week two or three times this year. Um, really kind of an undersized post, but really rebounds it well. Um, they got a nice shooter on the perimeter. Um, Jacob Miller in the post is a solid post player. So they, they definitely have weapons. Um, and and uh, just because they've lost a few in a row, I, I can tell you Coach Hoops does a good job down there, and they, they're, they're not going to roll over for anybody, and, and they're going to keep fighting for the rest of the season. And they're fighting to, for their lives to try and get, get into the top eight to make the, the conference tournament. So they're, they're going to keep clawing and scratching. So we, we are not going to be able to go to, to North Newton and just roll it out there and win for sure. So um, we got to, again, have a defensive mindset and, uh, and really make sure we're guarding. They run very similar offense to the last two teams we played, uh, four out, one in. A lot of dribble drive stuff where you, you got to guard the ball. Um, a lot of one on one guard the ball stuff. And if, we'll, if we do that, uh, you know, I like our chances. All right. And then uh, in, in terms of size, how do you feel like uh, the matchup is is there with them? I think we're really similar uh, all around the board size wise. Um, Goodwin's a, a bigger guard, but I, you know, I think we're pretty pretty similar. And they run. Uh, um, you know, they're big. Is I think going to have hopefully a hard time guarding Logan again because. He's got to guard him in the post, and he's got to guard him in the perimeter, and then he's got to guard him in ball screen stuff, and, and that's just asking a lot of, of a, a true five where Logan's more of a four. So hopefully we'll have a mismatch there. Um, I think our, our bench is a little deeper, but uh, uh, size-wise I, I think we're, we're pretty similar. Yeah. And then with uh, Logan playing so well, like we talked about in the last segment, do you, and you, you kind of touched on this briefly, but do you expect teams to maybe start to – gravitate toward him a little more defensively and then maybe open some things up for the the other perimeter players yeah i think so i think uh what 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 gets logan going is when he can score around the basket early that kind of gets his confidence going he's seen a few go in and then it's easier to make them from three so i think uh you know i wouldn't be surprised to see teams doubling him in the post uh, i wouldn't be surprised to start seeing a little bit more zone um you look at our statistics, we're not a, a great three-point shooting team. Um, Logan's our best three-point shooter, um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some zone. Um, but, you know, I, I, because our offense is a motion offense and we don't go from point A to point B, um, you know, it's kind of what the defense gives us. We're hard to scout. I think it makes us harder to guard. And, and you say you're not a great three-point shooting team, and I, I think the last, uh, the last show we did – I think you were sitting at about 29% on the year because we talked about it a little bit. And I, I know as of or going into yesterday, at least you're up to 32, which on, on the season to go up by three percentage points in just a couple of weeks is, uh, is a pretty big jump. Do you, do you think guys are, are just uh, getting a little more confident from outside or are you taking better shots? Or? I think the law of average has just caught up to us. I think we are taking better shots. I mean, that's, that's been our, our theme all year is we, we've got to get the ball side to side. We've got to be hard to guard. Uh, if we make one pass and shoot, even if we're kind of open, um, it's usually a bad shot because we haven't we haven't put any pressure on the other team's defense. So, um, but you know, I think our our percentage going up a few points is just a law of averages caught up to us, and we're ready to. Um, but I, I, you know, we have a lot of guys on our team that have the green light to shoot the three. It's just it's just the kind of threes we want are from inside out, or the ball gets into the paint and kicked out. Those are the threes we want, not just. Uh, you know, one pass and, and chuck it because you're open. A lot of times you're open for a reason. Right. Um, so we need to stress the defense a little bit more. All right. And uh, moving uh, beyond KCAC play, you've got kind of a, uh, a midseason exhibition game coming up against uh, UMKC, which is uh, they're a D1 NCAA opponent. So that's the, the highest level of college basketball. Are the, the guys excited to, to go up there and uh, and just, just play a team from that level? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, it's always fun to... You know, uh, every one of the guys on our team at some point in their careers, you know, in high school or growing up as a kid, had aspirations of playing Division One basketball, and and, uh, and they should. And, and uh, you know, for various reasons, you know, too, some too little too short, some a little too slow, whatever it is, whatever their circumstances are, I mean, uh, that's the level they wanted to, to be at. So for them to get a chance to compete against those guys and kind of see what that atmosphere is like and, and uh, just be – just kind of – can be able to compare themselves I think is, is is a fun experience and I mean it's an exhibition game so you know whatever the score is doesn't matter to us we'll, we'll play a lot of guys we'll play everybody um, just uh, which I like because it gives our guys a chance that haven't got a lot of time lately to to get some more minutes and maybe earn another opportunity and do you like having it kind of thrown into the 
kind of the home stretch of the the conference season, just kind of break things up a little bit, or was that just a, the, the, the time the when you could get it on the schedule? No, I don't like it at all. Um, <laughs> in fact, I told my assistants what what I asked my assistants what idiot scheduled that game right now. So, uh, you know, it was it was when it was available, and I thought the the experience um, of going and playing that was was worthwhile. I don't, I mean. A little worried about our guys being tired because now we're playing a lot of guys a lot of minutes. But uh, I also, you know, they're 19, 20, 21 years old. So, I mean, if they're getting that tired, um, we're not practicing more than an hour and 15 minutes a day usually now. So um, if, if they're getting that tired, then we're not in very good shape. So hopefully uh, we can go up there and just uh, kind of enjoy the experience and get guys a lot of opportunity and, and kind of see how we match up against the Division One program. All right. And uh, for anyone who's been to the games recently, they've probably noticed uh, a couple of bigger guys hanging out with the team. Uh, so you've got a couple of transfers coming in next year that I know are uh, our new recruits. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, we have uh, two new guys in. Uh, the first one is uh, Alex Grison. He's a, a Division II transfer, and uh, he'll hopefully have two years to play. We're still kind of working that out with the NCAA. Um, he, uh, he's originally from Texas, and he's about 6'4". Uh, pretty thick, and he can flat shoot the ball. He's a uh, really, really good three-point shooter. Um, just mentioned we're at 32%, which still isn't very good. Uh, we feel we felt like we needed to kind of bolster that, um, and we think Alex, Alex gives that. He's got a great basketball IQ as well, um, and it's kind of a small world. His, uh, his father is originally from Ottawa. Um, his mom's from Lawrence. His grandpa's the uh, local pastor here at a church, so kind of a small world. We didn't know any of that about each other until we started talking. Um, and so we're, we're happy to have Alex on campus. And then um, our other our other recruit is uh, his name is Tasmania Jones, and uh, Taz is about six six, about two thirty five, um, and and maybe as good an athlete or better athlete than Titus Rice, pound for pound. Taz is is a freak athlete, um, and the best thing I like about Taz is he, he wants to play in the post, and so and he's really good at it. Um, he shot 70% at his junior college, his uh, his sophomore year. That's 7-0, um, which is unheard of. It was actually right. second in the nation. So uh, he can put the ball in the basket at a high level. Um, and super nice kid. He's originally from Arkansas. Uh, he'll have two years to play as well. And so uh, if, if Taz can uh, accomplish what he needs to in the classroom, um, I think he'll be a, a real force in our league. And, and uh I, uh, hopefully we'll get to see him in a Braves jersey uh, here next year. And with Alex, you said he's six four, and he, you know, like you said, he's a, a thicker guy. Do you see him uh, playing the four or more out on the wing? No, he'll be on the wing. He'll be uh, uh, probably our two. So we'll, we'll hopefully be, uh, um, except for our midget point guard, we'll hopefully be uh, <laughs> we'll be pretty big next year. So that's kind of the plan is to be bigger. But I think we'll still be pretty athletic. So. Uh, um, bigger, bigger at the guard spot, and uh, not huge at getting the post. But I think um, with Taz down there, he's not going to get bullied by anybody. So, um, no, I think Alex will be on the perimeter for sure. And, and uh, we have Jake Hansen, who um, we signed for this year. And Jake had season-ending knee surgery before the season started. And he, Jake probably would have been our starting four this year. Mm-hmm. Um, six seven, lefty, really, really can stroke it, at really athletic. So uh, he had. Again, like I said, he has surgery and is done, doing rehab, and, and that's going well. So we anticipate him, him being at the four for us next year, kind of uh, um, replacing Alex Hasty. So uh, we feel like we feel pretty good about our recruiting class, just the, the start of it already, um, and if we can keep, continue to build. And then we need to go get some good young players that we can kind of develop in our junior varsity program and, and kind of go from there. So, um, But we feel those three guys that are out right now, if we can get them all healthy and, and eligible, uh, it's a good start. So, all right. And uh, you mentioned Hasty, and so I'll, I'll, I'll end with this question. I, you had uh, Alex Hasty and Cam Lindsay here last week because you and uh, Coach Tate were out recruiting, so we got to talk to the players a little bit. And I asked them what NBA player they would compare themselves to most, just in, in terms of their game and their approach. And I expected probably more ridiculous answers than I actually got. I, I, I thought they were they were pretty pretty good. Uh, Hasty chose Kirk Heinrich, and then uh, Cam Lindsay chose Draymond Green. How do you feel about those comps? Uh, you know, whatever whatever makes them makes them feel good about themselves, <laughs> I guess. So, I mean, I don't know. It's so hard to to compare yourself to somebody that plays at the highest level like that. I'll right. tell you one, one thing that I, I love about Alex Hasty, and if you look at his if you look at his numbers, I mean, he's not doing anything impressive stat wise. But what I'm, what you're going to get out of Alex Hasty is you're going to get consistent effort all the time. And he's going to be worried about defense first, and he knows his role. And a guy that knows his role at any level anymore is really rare. 
And so I'll often have people say, you know, if Alex could just score the ball more, but like, no. If he can score, that's great, but we need him to, to play defense and rebound and know his role and do what he does well. And, and he's probably one of the most coachable kids I've had in, in, in my couple of years as a head coach. So. All right. And then uh, Cam Draymond Green, same same kind of guy. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I guess he thinks he rebounds some. So uh, Cam and I've been together for a long time. You know, he had he was out of school for a couple of years and came back, and, and so I've known Cam a long time. And I was the main recruiter when we brought him in. So I, I love Cam. He's was one of my favorite guys, and we, we have fun with each other. So he. Uh, I mean, if he wants to go with Draymond Green, as long as he doesn't start start kicking people in the face and stuff, I'm I'm fine with it. So, uh, and if uh, if 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 we can if we can put the same results up as Golden State, then we'll we'll go with it. So, All right. well, that, we'll we'll hold you to that standard moving forward. Just play like Golden State, and everything will be. All right. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us today. This will we'll go ahead and take a break, and then we'll be back with uh, the uh, coach of the women's team, Coach Bruce Tate. But once again, thanks for joining us. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yep. Family Physicians, their physicians and nurse practitioner provide a variety of comprehensive health care services, including family medicine, OBGYN, pediatric and geriatric care. Doctors Ransom, Spratt, Gallier, Sinclair, Ojale, Nichols, and Simmons offer their services 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 8.30 to noon. For your health care needs, call Ottawa Family Physicians at 785-242-1620. Confidence. Passion skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. Listen up, TV lovers. It's the three words you've been dying to hear. Scandal is back. And in the first ten minutes alone, you're not going to know what hit you. Oh, my God. Know what's even more awesome? I will give you a hint. We can't wait for tonight. The entire TGIT lineup returns. Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder. It's TGIT time. Hell yeah! Tonight, starting at 8, 7 central on ABC. yeah! yeah. All right, welcome back to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show. You've got about half an hour left if you want to come down and join us and grab a pizza and talk a little OU basketball. I am joined now by the coach of the women's team, Coach Bruce Tate. And, Coach, thanks as always for being here. Yeah, no problem. Sorry I missed uh, last week, but I'm glad to be back to this week. Yeah, and, and you sent um, your three seniors, Maddie yeah. Stewart, Kaylee Williams, and Ashley Romig, and I – I think it was Maddie who the, the first thing she said when I when I was kind of taking them through the process was she just asked, is, is this going to be hard? And so <laughs> I, I was a little worried about how the night might go, but they actually uh, they did a really good job, gave some really thoughtful answers. So yeah. I think they did a lot better than they thought they were going to. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, once, once you get them talking, uh, you know, just about life and basketball, they'll get going. But they were pretty nervous about it. You know, I had to, you know, kind of bribe them with some uh, free dinner and all that good stuff. But. <laughs> Uh, glad they can can make it down and, and fill in for me. Yeah, and so uh, I'll, I'll start off with the uh, question I've been wanting to ask you since about seven forty five last night, <laughs> which is when you were down with by four with about sixteen seconds left. I'm sure as a coach you had a million different scenarios running through your head of what you wanted to do, what you want offensively, defensively, yep. who you wanted to get the ball to, yep. how quickly do you foul. What, in in all of those scenarios, were any of them your center who's who shot 11 threes the entire season, hitting two back to back three pointers in about 12 seconds to tie the game? Up? Exactly. Well, the uh, the first three, uh, she was an option. So uh, the the play I drew up is is one that we run you know all the time. I just put some players in some different positions. Uh, you know, the first option was Jenna in the corner, uh, then uh, Maddie coming up top. Uh, no, Kaylee coming to the corner, um, Madison coming up to the top, and then uh, Jenna coming back to the ball. And uh, I was like, our last option will be Ashley on the weak side. She most likely will will be wide open. Uh, you know, if 
if all those other options are covered up. So that that one didn't surprise me. Uh, when she gets her feet shut, she is a really good three-point shooter. Um, but when you have a score of that magnitude at high percentage around the basket, you know, what's what's the purpose of, of taking lower percentage shots with her? But right. uh, the second one, um, it just was a great read, you know, by center, understanding that we needed a three. And, and uh, you know, we run our, our attacking uh, play off the dribble to, to find a shooter in the corner. Jenna got it, uh, didn't have a good look. Ashley made the right read to, to step back out to the three. And she was feeling it. She launched it, and it was good. <laughs> yeah, no, it, when it went to uh, to Jenna, I just, I know time was running running down, and she didn't have the best look, but I just figured that's that's what was going up because, uh, you know, she made, you know, She's at least one of the best three-point yeah. shooters on the team, if not the yeah. best. Yeah. And then I, I was I was caught off guard that she passed it, first of all, and then <laughs> that it was Ashley at the top of the key. But, I mean, she didn't even blink, just stepped up and knocked it down. And, you know, it, it's it's really just all about the release and three-point shooting. Yeah. It doesn't, the, the rest of the, the motion doesn't really matter. And yep. she's, she's got a, a good release on it, and it – I mean, that, that looked good all the way, and it just went right in. It, so. Yeah, all net. I mean, it didn't touch yeah. a lick of rim. I mean, so she was, she was definitely set and, and ready to launch that puppy. So it was, it was a great shot. Great, I mean, great for her. I mean, she had a pretty much a frustrating game all the way up till that moment. Uh, you know, I think she scored 15 of her, her 19, you know, in overtime in those last two or three minutes. So a uh, great finish, you know, for, for a lot of American. And then definitely not to be overlooked is the fact that she uh, blocked the shot on the buzzer beater attempt down on the other end. So Yep, I, she that, did. She that, did. So great. I mean, she's a great – I mean, she leads the conference in block shots. So right. uh, that's something that, uh, you know, just kind of – Started coming on strong at the end of the year, and she just carried that confidence over to this year. And uh, she makes me nervous every once in a while going for those block shots. And, and I'm trying to get her, um, you know, to do it in smarter situations, you know, at the end of the game like that. Hey, you know, as long as I'm not making contact and I can get a hand on it, uh, it should give us a chance to, to get a good stop. And it did. Yeah, finished with six blocks on the game. So, and like you said, one of, I, I think Kramer, Jenna Kramer was your leading scorer, but she was right there with her. Yep. Um, so, some uh, other good performances to talk about last night too. I know, uh, you know, Kaylee Williams had a really tough play where uh, she she made a great steal and had had the run out was wide open and then, I, you know, sometimes it just happens. You look you look at the basket before you get your feet right or you know whatever the situation is and just lost control. But you could, you know, you you, you could see on her face that 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 was that was eating her up a little bit. But I know that she uh, she got in a opportunity to hit a couple of clutch free throws down the stretch and uh i you know hopefully that that kind of eased her mind a little yeah. bit after that yeah she's such an emotional player uh you know when things are going great like they were uh, in that first half four i think she was six for six you know didn't miss a shot yeah. uh, in the first half and then you know we got in a, a stretch there where uh you know we we're missing shots she got a Great still, and that's that's her thing. I mean, right. open court play, uh, she usually doesn't, you know, mess up that bad. And, man, it was one that, you know, could have got our momentum going back in the other direction. And uh, just that stretch it was just crazy. So, uh, but, man, she was a great still, and we wish that she could have converted on that for sure. Yeah, but uh, but you, you could just tell by look on her face that, you know, she, you know, it, it wasn't one that she was just going to, gonna blow off like that that was gonna stick with her so i was glad to see that she was able to hit those i i don't remember if they came in overtime to make it two position two possessions or if it was uh to pull back at the yeah. end of regulation but i know she got a couple of clutch free throws there she did that, and, and uh, we missed them down the stretch too it was i think we shot like 60 around 65 68 percent and uh you know we're usually around 75 so yeah that was that was a little nerve-wracking too as well right uh, and you mentioned, uh, you know, that, that stretch of play there. You guys were up by 17. Uh, it was a few minutes into the third quarter, and then that lead was down to five by the end of the third quarter. And then um, it, it, it seemed like it almost took Oklahoma Wesley and taking that lead there in the fourth quarter to kind of kickstart things. What 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 do you attribute that, uh, you know, that kind of sluggish period of play to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, having a 17-point lead, uh, you know, that third quarter, um, I told him at halftime, I'm like, look, Oklahoma Westland, they got some kids that can score, you know. So uh, we've got to take care of the basketball. We can't have too many empty possessions uh, because they, they will get momentum and get a little confidence, and that's what happened. Offensively, 
Uh, you know, we got some looks that we that we wanted to. Uh, you know, Ashley didn't convert on some. Maddie didn't convert. You know, you talk about Kaylee's uh, miscue there. Uh, you know, Caitlin, uh, one of our freshmen, had two great looks in the corner. Three-point shots came up short. Uh, Jenna had a great look up top uh, that was a little deeper than it needed to be. Uh, so a little out of rhythm for her. Um, and contribute, you know, uh, to, to Oklahoma Westland, you know, doing some great defensive things and only giving us one shot at it. Uh, so we didn't do a great job of even crashing the glass or being really aggressive, and, and we settled for a lot of things. So um, you mix that up with energy, you know, uh, created by Oklahoma Westland and their ability to, to get to the rim and make threes, man, it's, it was a different ball game. Yeah. And, and something I was talking about in the pregame show before the game was that if you look at Oklahoma Wesley on, Wesley and on paper, they don't they don't make a an incredibly high percentage of their threes. I think they're just below thirty percent, but they take a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And those sorts of teams I have to make you at least a little bit nervous because if you know those those shots are all worth an extra point, and if they do just happen to start making a few, which they did in the second half, then all of a sudden they score in bunches, and it can be a pretty different ball game real quick. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, they do shoot a low percentage, but they have. Tons of confidence taking those, and uh, they hit them at the right right time. Uh, another strength of theirs is that they they they're the number one team in the nation in free throw percentage. Uh, so you know, even fouling at the end of the game and sending them to the free throw line, you know, we're thinking, man, that's a guaranteed two points for them. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, those high volume three point shooters, uh, kids that can can you know get off the bounce and create a lot of scoring opportunities, very very dangerous team, and um, you know they're they're going to be a, a team to to reckon with here, you know, later in the season too as well. Yeah, and. Um just to to bring up some of the the freshmen you know you've got uh, a lot of freshmen that you've had to work into the into the rotation this year and they've really responded well you know yeah obviously Jenna Kramer is uh I think the third highest scorer on the team right now uh, yeah fourth fourth, fourth. Uh-huh. and um uh, you know you've got her starting and then Hendrix uh starting at the point guard spot and then something I noticed down the stretch in last night's game is that in every defensive position you had Caitlin Hughes coming onto the court so um, she she doesn't necessarily fill up the stat sheet but no. clearly she's uh, she's impressed in, in that area and improved as the, the season's gone on yeah absolutely you know with freshmen you never know on any given night who's who's going to be that, that one that needs to step up for us and and uh, you know what we were doing with Clay, Caitlin there at the end of the game Kaylee had four fouls so we had to go offense defense you know, from from that standpoint, and right. and Caitlin wasn't doing anything, you know, consistently fantastic on the offensive end when it came to making shots and things of that nature. But she works her tail off, you know, you know on the defensive end. Uh, does she still have a lot to improve on? Absolutely. But uh, man, she she gets down in the stance. She gets over screens well. Keeps her feet moving. Um, came up with two big steals, you she know, did, yeah. down the stretch too as well. And and our seniors pointed that out. Um, you know, the, that's the last thing that they said in the locker room. You know, it's like, man, defensively down the stretch in overtime, some great stops, turned it into offense, got to the free throw line, and it's like, Caitlin, great steals. You know, so just to give her that confidence, you know, going – Going into this, these next few ball games is going to be huge. We we need our bench. We didn't have our bench last night. You know, Jess King wasn't there. You know, last night and and uh, that that was tough. Uh, but uh, so Caitlin stepping up was was great. All right, we'll uh, we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk a little about the Kansas Wesleyan win before that, and then we'll do a little uh, preview of Bethel here. You're listening to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show here on KOFO. Time in downtown Ottawa has been Ottawa's Pizza Joint since 1985. Enjoy their lunch buffet Monday through Friday from 11 to 2. Dine in or carry out your order. Call 242 TIME. That's 242 8463. It's always time for pizza at Pizza Time. Lamb Roberts Funeral Director Eric Price. I think an important part of what our staff can provide is that everyone in our staff has been affected by death. They've Everyone's lost a loved one in their lifetime, so they understand the grief process. They understand how difficult it is to move on from a loved one after they've passed away. Because of that experience, they're able to relate to the fact that everyone grieves differently. Everybody struggles at different times. Lamb Roberts Funeral Home. Compassionate care when you need it most. 
All right, guys, have a look. Coach's car battery died. He's running behind. And since I haven't been paying attention, I have no idea what plays we run or what most of your names are, for that matter. So what I'll do is I'm going to pop this antacid tablet. I'll fall down. I'll fake a heart attack. And then you guys act shocked and concerned and stuff. And hopefully that'll buy me enough time for the coach to get here. When you need to be there, you need an interstate. The car battery auto techs prefer. Visit a Firestone Complete Auto Care this month for a free battery check and details on up to $20 in rebate savings. The Winter Rethink Kitchen and Bath event is going on now at the Home Depot. And the Delta Porter Center Set Bath Faucet is on sale at a new lower price, just $79. Its oil-rubbed bronze finish and curved spout bring a touch of old-world elegance without an extravagant price tag. The Delta Porter Faucet, now just $79, only at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. U.S. only valid through March 9th. We're good. Welcome back to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show. We've still got about 15 minutes if you want to come down and join us and grab a slice of pizza and talk some Braves basketball. Again, we're here with the uh, coach of the women's team, Bruce Tate, and we just went over the overtime thriller last night over Oklahoma Wesleyan, but uh, we haven't talked about the game before that, which was Kansas Wesleyan. And... Um, that uh, in, in talking to the three seniors last week, you know, it was uh, it was pretty clear they wanted to beat K Dub, and um, he, for the most part, I think you guys had the the lead by and large for most of the game. But things got pretty tight there in the fourth quarter, and it looked like they were uh, when you guys were able to. to pull away down the stretch they were they were pretty excited to get that win yeah absolutely I mean just just bounce back from you know the game that uh that we really just handed to them out at their place I mean they did a great job we were playing well at the time and uh, they needed to come in and and play well on their home floor and they did that they responded extremely well so um you know my message to the girls you know that um you know you know that game's in the past, but I mean, honestly, they you know they embarrassed you on their floor. So uh, now they're coming back to our place. Can we respond? Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to, to to continue our streak and get on a roll. And uh, you know, how are we going to accept this challenge? And uh, you know, Kansas Wesleyan's one player short. You know, Ferris was out, but uh, they did a great job of game planning. You know, both teams played zone pretty much the whole game. Not something that both teams do so is a low scoring very challenging uh game kansas wesleyan made some big threes you know there in the second half that uh that kept them in a ball game they did and um you you mentioned that uh, you wanted to keep the uh, the street going i i did a little research and maybe maybe you know this i know coaches don't can tend to keep track of these things or not but uh you guys are on a five game winning streak in kcac play this Mm -hmm. year and uh, that is actually the longest con- in-conference winning streak of, uh, of your time as head coach at OU. So, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, congratulations. And, yeah, I, I, I know coaches don't really pay attention to that sort of stuff, but I just started doing some digging the other day. And, yep. and uh, five, five games in a row in, in a conference where really anybody can beat anybody yep. on a given night. Yep. That, that, that's pretty impressive. And especially, um, you know, with, like we said, you, you're playing in – four or five freshmen consistent minutes every every game out that that's a pretty impressive accomplishment for this team yeah absolutely and uh you know i've been here for 19 years um you know i've been around for uh, you know that that group of players that competed for four uh straight conference championships we won three of those and on paper on paper uh this team is just as good uh as uh that that 2006 2000 sweet 16 uh 2007 Sweet 16 team, and uh, we not we're not as you know athletic or talent or as deep, but uh, defensively, you know, defensive field goal percentage of 35. That's you know just right at where we were there. Um, you know, causing turnovers is not something we do. We just force teams to shoot bad percentages. Uh, scoring wise, you know, four players in double figures. Uh, we're right there. Uh, this group can make free throws, uh, unlike that group. So, if we do what we need to do, man, we're we, we can we can we can really shake this thing up. So, uh, we're just trying to take it one game at a time and and uh, trying to get these freshmen to to just learn what it takes to win a championship. Because 
that kind of sets you up for the future. You know, right. now they know what to expect. They can communicate that. They can show that uh, to every player that comes into our program from here on out. Uh, relying so much on the freshmen and, and now being 11-4 and four in conference play, would you say the freshmen are maybe ahead of where you expected or, or thought they, they would be at this point? Oh, yeah, that was expected two months ago. So, uh, you know, our thing was uh, we, we communicated that to, to Jenna and Kelsey fairly early. Uh, you know, once we get into conference play, your 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 freshman season is over. Yeah. Uh, our our non conference was tough enough uh, for them to get ready. I mean, playing Baker, Benedictine teams like that, um, and uh, you know, they they accepted the challenge. Or there's there's still a lot of growth there. Uh, but uh, but man, you know, I'm a little surprised. Absolutely, but super excited. You know, and just kind of riding this wave and and um, and just kind of ready to to kind of let go and and let them take the reins and. And uh, there's weeks that I really got to challenge them. And then there's weeks that I can sit back and say, hey, you know, you guys are doing okay. But uh, but uh, the practice Friday night, if you would have seen our practice the night, <laughs> the night before last night's game, uh, it, it's, it, was, it was a little rough. I mean, we're throwing the ball in the stands, and it just wasn't, wasn't pretty. So I, Coach Bedell and I just laughed about it. So they came out and responded. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of uh, kind of guiding the freshmen along, how have the how have the seniors done in terms of kind of getting them up to speed to where they can they can play at this level in their freshman seasons? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, the, the the good thing about uh, Kelsey is that uh, you know Waverly and Op- Opie, you know, had a, a pretty good rivalry in high school and. And, um, you know, Ashley was a senior when Kelsey was a freshman. Kelsey didn't play tons uh, as a freshman, uh, but they played in the same summer program, so they they knew of each other. Um, So Ashley was a huge supporter uh, and a big uh, factor of us landing, you know, Kelsey with this, with the relationship she had there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jenna, uh, too, as well. I mean, when she came down on a recruiting visit and she played with the girls, um, they noticed that there was something there that yeah. that could help us. So, um, and those girls knew they had an opportunity to to come in and play. Neither one of them had a clue that that it was going to be a starting role uh, that they were going to able uh, to to earn. But uh, they've you know, there's there's definitely been some up and downs. But uh, but man, we're we're bringing them along and we're bringing them along quickly. Um, you know, Kelsey probably has the toughest. Uh, road uh, of them all. Um, I've handed the team over to her. I said she's the leader, uh, and she, I don't think she's quite accepted it yet. Uh, she's not as vocal as I would like her to be, but uh, you know, there's times where she's she looks really good, uh, and then there's times where she looks like a freshman. All right. Well, we have one more break to take, and then we'll be back with the uh, final segment again. Got about five more minutes. If you want to join us here at Pizza Time, you're listening to the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show here on KOFO. Pizza Time in downtown Ottawa has been Ottawa's pizza joint since 1985. Enjoy their lunch buffet Monday through Friday from 11 to 2. Dine in or carry out your order. Call 242-TIME. That's 242-8463. It's always time for pizza at Pizza Time. At Ottawa Family Physicians, their physicians and nurse practitioner provide a variety of comprehensive health care services, including family medicine, OBGYN, pediatric and geriatric care. Doctors Ransom, Spratt, Gallier, Sinclair, Ojale, Nichols, and Simmons offer their services 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 8.30 to noon. For your health care needs, call Ottawa Family Physicians at 785-242-1620. Confidence, passion, skill, knowledge. At Ottawa University, I've gained the strength to discover who I am and the confidence to be myself. I've met people from around the globe from different backgrounds and cultures. With opportunities to get involved and bring our passions to life with more than 30 clubs and organizations, we all come together into a faith-inspired community that quickly becomes family. I invite you to be brave like me at Ottawa University. Find out more at ottawa.edu today. Timing is everything, and right now is a great time to get great deals on a certified pre-owned Honda at the Honda Dream Deal Sales Event, going on now. Well-qualified buyers can receive 1.9% APR financing on select Honda certified pre-owned vehicles, so you can feel good about driving KBB.com's 2016 Best Value brand. The Honda Dream Deal Sales Event is happening now. Visit hondacertified.com and search for local inventory. See dealer for financing details based on 2016 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. See your Honda dealer for limited warranty details. 
welcome back to Pizza Time here in downtown Ottawa. We're, we're wrapping up the uh, Pizza Time Hoop Talk show. I'm still joined by Coach Bruce Tate of the OU women's team. And we've talked about the, uh, the last two games, but now we'll have, because of the scheduling, we'll only have one in between now and our next show. And uh, you'll be going down to uh, North Newton to play Bethel on Saturday. And coming off uh, uh, maybe more of a, an emotional win over Kansas Wesleyan, one that the team really wanted, and then you know the, the way the, the things turned out last night, uh, another kind of high emotion win. Uh, how do you avoid that? You know that trap of going to play a team that hasn't won yet in the conference and and avoid taking them lightly, especially yeah. on the road? Uh, just our, our preparation is going to be the same, you know. Um, you know, solid practice uh, after taking a day off. Um, you know, film preparation uh, is not going to change. Uh, I think, you know, our returners know that, how serious I take every opponent. Um, you know, Jess came into the office and uh, this week, and she's like, uh, do, you, do you watch film of every team that we play, um, like, every time? And I'm like... <laughs> Yes, yeah, I do. So uh, for, for as much as our, our girls know about each of our opponents, uh, I think it's just as important to, uh, if we're playing for friends, uh, we've got to do the same for Bethel because um, on any given night, you know, in this sport, um, anything can happen, uh, and especially in a conference play, um, going to somebody else's place, they're going to play up. I mean, this is their opportunity to make their season. Uh, we was in that position last year, uh, being in the middle of the conference. Uh, we get beat by Bethany two times just because we thought that we should be able to walk in there and win. And, and uh, I want this team to have a different approach. And, and I've been trying to instill that from day one. Yeah, so, uh, so I think they'll be ready. Uh, but we're, we're still going to have to play uh, our, our basketball uh, and, and be mentally prepared uh, for anything. And this team, uh, I know you've taken it one game at a time. Are are they are they ready to, for that that stretch of schedule coming up here in a couple of weeks, where they're going to play Tabor and friends back to back? Yeah, and um, you know we we don't want to overlook, but you know we take care of this game Saturday, and then yeah, we're back in our tough stretch. So uh, Sterling uh, playing some good basketball. I think Tabor is next after that. Uh, friends after that. Then we get back again. You know so. Um, man, this is this is this is going to be a great test for us, um, and we, you know, we want to finish this thing over over 500, whatever it is, uh, to put ourselves in a great position to to chase for that first place. But yeah. let's see if we can finish in the top two to, to guarantee a trip uh, to the national tournament. All right, well, that's all the time we've got. I want to thank uh, Coach Steventhal earlier, and now Coach uh, Tate. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right, and thanks to you all for listening. This has been the Pizza Time Hoop Talk Show here on KOFO.